Hi, this is Mr. Patch. Welcome back to chemistry. Today we're going to look at the Bunsen burner. So the Bunsen burner is this device here and we'll use it to heat up different solutions or different chemicals to cause chemical reactions and so forth. The important thing you have to keep in mind for the, for the Bunsen burner is, of course, it's always possible to get burned. We always wear our goggles whenever we're using the Bunsen burner because every now and then something unexpected happens. Maybe, maybe uh, a beaker full of something hot falls off a ring stand or something. But anytime you're over here using the Bunsen burner, you have to wear your goggles. And we'll look at this in depth and see how to adjust it and see what the characteristics of the flame are. So let's start by just looking at the different parts of the Bunsen burner. There's a couple different intake valves on this for air to mix with the gas. One of the valves is at the bottom. And the, the hard thing with the, with the valve on the bottom is you can't just look at it and see how open it is. So what I do before I ever light the Bunsen burner is I turn it off. It's sort of like a garden hose. Turn it to the right and it closes it, right? And open it by turning it clockwise or to the left. I just turn it clockwise two or three times and that'll be open. Every now and then when you're, you're gonna use the Bunsen burner, it, you might look at it and say, oh, it looks like it's uh, looks like it's angled or not sitting right or something like that. That's usually because it needs to be, you need to just turn part of the hose here. It just says, it's like a garden hose. Sometimes it gets a little out of alignment and, and uh, needs to just be turned a little bit. So just by turning this over here, twisting it, I can make it seat and sit pretty well. So one of, the, uh, one of the ways that you can let gas in is right here. The other way, the easier way in many ways, is the one right over here at the tabletop. So we have a, we have a, uh, a hose out here that gas can flow through. If this handle is perpendicular to the direction of the hose, that means the gas is cut off. If this handle is going the same way as the hose, you might even be able to hear that. That means the gas is on. So what I do when I want to light the Bunsen burner is I make sure that all those are off. Double check. Make sure that this is open two or three times. The reason I do this two or three times is, is some students accidentally open it way, way, way up and open it too far. So two or three times is really good. And when you want to light this, I light it by holding the match on the side. I don't want my hand anywhere above it. I want it to be on the side here. So I can light my match like so, hold it on the side, and then slowly turn on the gas. And there we are. See? So my hand's still there. I'm not getting burned or anything. And we got the Bunsen burner going. So. This is one of the characteristic flames of the Bunsen burner, right? If you look at, they've got a kind of an outer cone over here. You can see an inner cone there. That's kind of what you want, right? If yours doesn't look like that though, you have to be able to adjust the flame. And on these Bunsen burners, the way we adjust it is by turning the barrel. I'm not turning the, uh, the valve below. I'm, I'm tw actually turning this barrel here. And when I do that, it'll open up a little tiny hole here at the, at the base of the barrel and let in some air. I could actually plug up that hole with my hand. Let me do it right now. Look how the flame changes. Twisting the barrel does kind of the same thing. So I'm gradually closing it up and look how the flame changes right like so, right? This is without the air going in. And now when I start allowing air to come in, a little hole opens up here when I twist it. It starts going back, right? I'm starting to get that, see that sort of an inner cone over here. So one of the things you're gonna have to do on this, on this next lab over here is you're gonna have to draw both those. Draw what the flame looks like with the air intake open and closed. It's open right now. Which one of those is hotter? That's another thing we want to find out. So is that yellow flame with the air intake closed hotter? Well, let's find out. How can we find out? 
Well, one way I can find out is I've got two different wires here. I've got an aluminum wire and I've got a copper wire. One of your jobs will be to look up the melting point of aluminum and the melting point of copper and see how hot it has to get for these things to melt. So, so if I place this uh, aluminum wire here in this flame, I can see it's getting kind of a soot on it, but I'm not really seeing much else happen. Let's try something else. I'm also going to take a, uh, I'm going to take this wire mesh. Here's, this one might be a little easier to see. Okay, and I'm going to put this over it and see if it, it does anything for us. I'm not really seeing much difference in the wire. I can see, it looks like there's a faint glow on it. When I move it, when I move it away, I can see a faint glow. I'm not sure that you could see it. Let's try, let's try this piece of wood, just going across it like so I'm not really plugging it up. So that's an interesting characteristic. It looks like it's burning on the outside of the flame the outside of the barrel, but the inside part wasn't burning. That means it must not be as hot there. Let's try, uh, let's try opening up with the other flame. So what I'm doing is I'm opening up now, trying to get that little blue inner cone, if you can see that blue inner cone there. And what I always try to tell students is look for Look for a place above that blue inner cone, and that's usually a hot zone. But we, can, we should test it and find out. Just like before, I can go like so, right? I'm getting kind of like what we got before, burning on the outside of the flame. Up here at the top part, okay, pretty different, okay? Above that blue cone, I'm getting something very different on that one. I just stuck that over there in the uh, sink. And above that, that blue section over there, what I find is that uh, the whole thing started to burn. It didn't have, it didn't have a cool in, inner portion and a hot outer portion. The easiest way to get burned when you're using a Bunsen burner is to pick up something you've already been using. Like if I, I would never pick up this, uh, this piece of screen over here with my hands. Why? Because I've already had it in the flame. That's how most people get burned. They don't get burned by touching the flame. They get burned by touching something that they've already used in the flame. So you have to be careful about that. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this up, up here. Can you see, wow, that's a big difference. That's, that's a lot different than what it was doing before with the yellow flame when I had the air intake, uh, when I had that air intake closed. Let's see what happens when I bring it down a little bit. Now, do you see now it looks more like a donut, right? If I bring it down a little bit here, I'm getting it so it's not as hot on the inside, right? So inside that, that blue cone on down, as I go down lower, it's not as hot. It's not glowing as much. And there's a sort of a circle where the inside's not as hot. So I want to be above that. I want to be here above this section. That's the hot part, above that blue cone. Let's look at it one more time here. So above that blue cone, there we go. That's pretty hot. But inside that blue cone, not as hot on the inside. Let's check the, uh, the two wires. So here I've got aluminum. And down here in the cool part, remember this is the area where the, uh, where the, uh, screen did not glow and I don't see much happening to this aluminum wire if I bring it up to the to the hot part above oh, look at that it took it almost no time to melt that aluminum wire so down here below it at the lower part of the flame here this is not as hot 
and the part above it is hotter than what it takes to melt aluminum. Bring it up again. There we go. So now we have a temperature range that we can estimate. Let's, let's pretend that the aluminum melted at 500 degrees. If we looked up and said, what's the melting point of aluminum? It was 500 Celsius. Then we'd say, okay, that part below must be below 500, right? The part above must be at or above 500 to melt it. So we're getting kind of a range over here of these. I've got another wire over here. This one's copper. This one's harder to melt than the aluminum. We have to look up its melting point as well. Once again, uh, down here at the bottom part, it's not going to be hot enough to, to melt the copper. You've got to go up to the very tip top section up here and stay up there for a while. And even then, it's hard to get the copper to melt. I'm starting to, that's, it's glowing really well right now. And it seems like I'm getting a, a bead, like a little tiny bead uh, of liquid there, like a little round bead at the top. So I'm gonna, let me clip that off and try again with a part that, that I know has not been in there so we can see. So right now, this has not touched the, uh, the flame, this section of it here. We'll see if we can get a little, uh, little bead of, of it starting to show up here. But this is one of those labs where some students, some students never quite find the hot part or maybe their Bunsen burner uh, isn't giving us as hot a flame or something like that. This one looks like it might. But it takes a little while. And eventually, so this is really close to the melting point of copper. And maybe if I can get it to a little bead to show up there, it might be just a little bit above the melting point of copper. By the way, I don't know if you can see, there's a little bit of a green flame there. That's an indication of copper ions. Copper, okay, now I'm starting to get a tiny bit of a, what looks like a round, sort of like a little tiny raindrop at the end of melted copper. So I've, I've hit the melting point over there. So that's gonna be really hot. I'm gonna just set it down over here on top of the wire screen. So remember that the flame's got hot parts and it's got cold parts. Here's a piece of card stock here. This gives us sort of an outline of the flame. And we can see that we definitely have a cooler part in the middle and a hotter part above, right? This part above here at the very top, that's where you wanna get your real hot part. So what I'd like you to, to do is draw the uh, Bunsen burner and label the different parts and tell what they do and label the flame and draw a flame that's uh, with the air intake open and with it closed and where it's hotter and where it's not as hot. All right.